Right, hi everybody, welcome back to the land of low friction. Uh, so today I'm just going to be going through immersive waxing again, but uh, concise. Uh, for me, I'll try. So I had um, a bunch of requests over time and also from one of the um, podcasts I was on to do just a really concise um, demonstration of how to immersive wax um, without going to sort of too detail on every step which sort of stretches it out. So. I'll, I'll do that, so I'll demonstrate just basically how easy immersive waxing is overall, um, because it's still probably the most asked about, um, you know, lubrication topic, and still the, I guess, one of the more um, uh, in-depth things that still comes up in a lot of, you know, podcasts and so on. So, if you've been pondering about immersive waxing and you wonder whether or not it is for you or isn't for you, um, I'm going to do the quick run through on how to do an immersive wax um, and that you know, may help you decide if you want deeper detail, if, you want, if you've got questions about reusing master links or you know, a whole bunch of other stuff that I've got a, the most epic FAQ guide in history because I get uh, yeah, so many uh, questions uh, on everything you can think of. So if you want deeper detail, um, go to episode seven, uh, the waxing FAQ uh, Q guide, episode four, part one and two, I go through the immersive waxing process uh, more slowly in detail at sort of each step. So if you really want to get that, and I've also got on the Wax End Master Guide on my website, step by step on how to do an immersive uh, you know, wax, and it's got pictures at each um, sort of step that needs it. So you really can't go wrong, it's very easy. But I won't ramble on or I'll be undoing my concise uh, goal of this video. So demonstrating immersive waxing. So I've got my chain, let's say I'm already obviously waxing, or I've bought a pre-prepped wax chain and I need to re-wax it. So I'll demonstrate that first and then I'll talk about uh, what you need to do if you want to prep the chain yourself at home. So I've got my wax chain on my bike. Step one, I want it in the smallest cogs that I can on the rear um, so that there's not a lot of derail tension that's going to fling when I release it. So smallest cog that you can on the rear. Get the, uh, the, the master link to the bottom span of the drivetrain. Master link tool. I pop that in there, I squeeze, that pops the master link open. I can now remove my chain. I just pull it from the top there and I just pull that out from the derailleur there. Keep your master link. I do not wax the master link and I explain in the other video why. So now I've got my chain off the bike, that's pretty easy. Now I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, putting it onto the swisher tool and into the wax pot. So we'll move over to the wax pot. Okay, I have, I think seven steps later, arrived at my wax pot. I'm getting my swisher tool and I'm threading it, just looping basically some uh, spans of chain onto the swisher tool into the wax pot. Now, normally I would put it onto a, um, the wax that is not melted, turn the pot on, go away, do fun stuff, come back whenever later when it's melted. That way the chain will have heated up to the same temperature as the wax, the old coating melted off. And now I can just swish it and get a fresh coating in and hang it to set. Um, since I basically have sort of preset this up for the video, the wax is already melted so you can sort of see it in there. We're going to pretend that it has been in there for 10 minutes and I am going to swish it and hang it to set. So if you do put it into pre-melted wax, give it 10 minutes so the old coating can melt off and you can swish a, um, a fresh coating through. So I take it out of the wax pot. You note I'm wearing gloves because the wax and the chain will be hot and I hang it to set. Um, I've got a good setup to hang it to set where the wax drips off back into the pot. Don't stress if that's hard for you to do. Just have it drip into like an aluminium barbecue tray, something like that, um, easy as. All right, here's one I've done earlier for demonstration purposes. So a freshly waxed chain is stiff. You do need to break the wax link bond before you can reinstall it onto your drivetrain. So you can do it link by link with your thumb. That gets not as much fun as if you can set up something where you can just rip it through. So you can use, like some people use just a piece of dowel in something, a wheelie bin handle around their tool stand uh, there's a whole bunch of solutions uh, to more quickly and easily do it or just do it link by link with your thumb. And that's that. Now I'm ready to go back and install it onto my bike. Alrighty, so back at my bike, I just need to thread the chain back through the same way basically as it came out. So I'm going to do that through the top span. And so I just thread that through. I want to have a little bit 
of chain hanging over the other side there. It's just rewinding over the derailleur, uh, sorry, over the cassette, and you're just threading it back through the derailleur exactly the same way as it um, is going to run, obviously, when you're pedaling. Um, so thread that back through uh, around the top cog, around the bottom cog, pull that through, grab my master link and master link pliers, put that in one side, put that in the other side, get the pins into the fat part of the, um, or the open part of the link. And again, if you want detail on how to um, uh, do that, it's on the uh, other videos. Get my link tool in, oops. So I've got the chain, the link tool in the wrong spot there for the camera, but that's all right. I just basically put this in one side, one side and squeeze that open, snicks the link tool into place and my chain is back on. Give that a bit of a pedal. You get a bit of excess wax to start with. And then after a few minutes of pedaling, that will be all smooth and uh, you'll get, now you're up for a, a good few hundred Ks of ultra low friction, uh, silky smooth riding. So um, even with me being a little slower than normal on the Marslink reinstall, um, normally I can get them really in uh, super impressive, but probably total labor time I would say on that from removing the chain, threading it to the swisher, putting it in the wax pot, I'd say that's a minute maybe. Um, coming back whenever later when the wax is melted, swishing it and hanging, hanging that to set, that's probably 30 seconds. Uh, removing, getting the chain uh, off from where it's hanging, breaking the wax link bond, reinstalling, it's probably about maybe say, allow a minute and a half. So we've got sort of a minute, a half, a minute and a half, so we've got maybe around three minutes labor uh, once you're up and running. It might take you four, maybe even five minutes for your first go, but you'll get once you've done this a few times, you get very quick at it. Um, and so if you're weighing up whether or not this is something you can do, um, if immersive waxing is for you, it is as simple as that. Pop chain off your bike, thread it onto a swisher, into a wax pot, turn the pot on, come back whenever later, swish it, hang it to set, reinstall your chain um, as such. I normally reinstall my chain just before that day's uh, ride. <coughs> so it's not like you have to stand there and do stuff all right, so um, the other, th I guess, part that goes along with this, so from the top, if you were to start to go to immersive waxing and you've got a new chain and you've got, uh, obviously comes with factory grease, which you need to remove, what's the process? Is that difficult? Um, so it's super easy. I do have the instructions in my uh, Wax uh, Zen Master Guide and also the Wax at Home Guide. I've got sort of a short guide, a longer guide. Just get a container. Buy some, in Australia, it's Mineral Terps uh, is the one I recommend best over degreaser. Mineral Terps, it's cheap, it's clean, it's easily recycled, it's a very powerful solvent for, um, for factory grease. Um, so you would get a container like this, put say 250 mil of um, Mineral Terps into the container, let it soak for 15 minutes, come back, shake it, give it a good agitated shake for at least a minute, pour out that Terps into a uh, container for proper disposal, 250 mil of terps in. You don't need to give it a soak now. You've done that. Give it a uh, agitated shake for a minute or so. Pour that out. Do the same for a third bath. So you've done three baths of mineral terps. You now want to do, um, just dry the chain a bit. Give it uh, exactly the same um, in your container, but just two baths of methylated spirits. So there's two parts to cleaning. One is removing the, uh, the, the factory grease. The, the methylated spirits, which is basically pure alcohol, just make sure you remove any film that might be left behind from cleaning because the wax and all the top wax lubricants, they need to bond to clean clear chain metal. So just using a finishing agent like the alcohol, make sure there's no film left behind from the cleaning, um, especially if you're using um, degreasers or if some people use diesel, petrol, don't use that if you can. It just leaves a heavier film behind. It's a bit, bit harder to, uh, a bit more work for the, for the methylated spirits. So two bars of 250 mil of methylated spirits, Remove, allow the chain to dry. Um, you can dry the chain really easy, especially post metho, just with a hairdryer. Um, that heats up the chain so it evaporates out from inside the chain really well. And then into your wax pot. So prepping a chain for waxing, you've got that initial 15 minute soak. 
After that, it is, it is sub 10 minutes work max to get through the remaining bars, dry the chain, get the chain into the wax pot, and you're off and running. Um, and from then on, it's just re-waxing. And uh, hopefully we sort of demonstrated how easy it is. So that is the, um, my attempt at a concise video of demonstrating how to uh, do immersive waxing and hopefully demonstrating really how easy uh, that is to help you decide whether or not that's for you. Um, one last bit to remember is that if you're worried about um, being able to still keep up with uh, re-waxing your chain, if you think, I just don't know if I can do that, um, stay on top of that, then the top um, couple of products we recommend that uh, go in conjunction with uh, immersive waxing, actually there's three that we use in conjunction with immersive waxing mostly, Silka SS Drip, UFO Drip, True Tension Tungsten All Weather, especially if you're commuting a lot in the wet. Uh, they are wax compatible, so you can wax um, when you need to. You can reapply with a drip, one of the wax compatible drip lubes, and somewhere after say three to five re-lubes uh, with the wax compatible drip lube, do an immersive wax to reset your uh, contamination in the chain. Um, so if immersive waxing every time is not for you, which is king, then immersive waxing plus one of the top um, chain coating wax compatible uh, lubricants, that's your next best second um, sort of system to move to. And I think I'd, like that should be something that most people should be able to fit in okay and just get such super low wear. And your chain comes out of the wax looking brand new every time. So no cleaning, it just comes out of the pot and looks amazing. No faffing with solvent, fighting the black mess that you get with, uh, with a lot of other lubricants. So that'll do, any more, won't be concise. I don't know what time it was, hopefully less than 10 minutes, we'll see. So thanks for watching. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other YouTube type things like share with your friends. Uh, so that'll keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes.